Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Young, let me start off with uh, an issue that I've worked on for a long time, as others have, and that is the high cost of prescription drugs, the fact that the United States, through our Medicare program, does not negotiate uh, drug prices. Uh, what does the President's budget do in terms of lowering drug prices uh, and demanding that we get fair prices from the pharmaceutical industry? Senator Sanders, the budget makes clear that the President expects action on this this year, uh, that we expect a bill from Congress that allows Medicare to negotiate drug prices uh, that saves at least a half a trillion dollars uh, for the American people because through lowering of uh, drug payments, which you know is an extreme cost not only to beneficiaries but uh, to taxpayers through the Medicare program. Um, to my mind, in the richest country on earth, it is hard to believe that millions of seniors don't have teeth in their mouths, don't have the hearing aids that they need, don't have the eyeglasses they need. What does the President's budget propose in terms of expanding Medicare? Uh, not only does the President uh, want and expect action this year, as he called for in the uh, joint address on prescription drugs, he expects uh, those savings uh, and others to be used to strengthen the Medicare Medicaid programs uh, with plans to enhance dental, vision, uh, and hearing aid through those programs. Ms. Young, you may be aware that, unbelievably, you know, I hear my Republican colleagues talk about problems that somehow they forget issues like we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country on earth, while the very rich are richer. What does this bill finally begin to do, the President's budget, in terms of childhood poverty in America? Uh, one, it, uh, it looks at the issues you brought up about women uh, in the job force and a need for child care uh, for all families that's affordable, equitable. So it invests heavily uh, in child care uh, spending. It reinvests in Head Start. Today, the discretionary budget serves 95,000 fewer children uh, than it did 10 years ago. Uh, so it looks at a, a full picture to allow families uh, to, to, to educate their children in a way uh, that's, that's fair to all families, no matter of income level. Why is that important? I mean, I'm asking you such an obvious question, but some apparently still don't appreciate this. Why in today's economy is it important? that we have a strong child care and pre-K system? Uh, I, I'm here before you as a woman. Families look very different uh, than they did 30 years ago. Uh, we need to, uh, all the tools available to allow women and fathers to enter the workforce while not worrying about child care for, for their families. Um, the United States, I say to my colleagues, used to be the best educated country on earth. Uh, my memory is correct, we used to have the highest percentage of college graduates of any major country. That is no longer the case. Uh, and in, Senator Graham mentioned that this is a very competitive economy, world economy, it certainly is. And you know what, you're not gonna succeed in a competitive world economy unless we have the best educated workforce in the world. Uh, what does this, the President's budget do in terms of improving, uh, allowing working families uh, to get the higher education that right now they cannot afford. This budget would allow uh, two-year community colleges uh, to be free for Americans, which we think is the appropriate thing to do. As the president has said over and over, we developed an education system decades ago that said 12 years was the right amount of years. Uh, we need to relook at that. Uh, and I think if we look at now what the educational requirements are, are for most jobs, that doesn't make sense anymore. That's an area, by the way, we're going to maybe um, expand a little bit on what the president's idea is. I think we can go beyond community colleges, in making them available to working uh, families. Uh, my last question is, uh, while some of my colleagues may not appreciate it, the scientists are pretty clear that climate change is an existential threat to this planet, that not only the United States, but China and countries, India, countries all over the world are going to have to work extremely aggressively to transform our energy system and in the process create millions of good paying jobs. Uh, Ms. Young, what does the President's budget do in terms of finally getting us to move forward aggressively in climate change? Uh, the discretionary budget invests $36 billion to combat climate change, uh, an increase of $14 billion, Senator Sanders, uh, at the, also at agencies you wouldn't typically think of, but all agencies are being impacted by climate change, including the Department of Defense 
including the Small Business Administration. Uh, we have to look at this government-wide, and that's what this budget is doing. Uh, in addition, that's in addition to the billions uh, of investments in climate change we're, we're putting forth and as part of the jobs plan. All right, my last question is there are communities all over this con country, often communities of color, that have been ignored for many, many years. What does this president's budget do in terms of improving life in those communities? Uh, sir, you'll see an increased amount. We just talked about climate change in, uh, in the environmental justice space. Uh, this is an area we've put out an executive order requiring all agencies uh, as they implement, as they think about the budget, as they think about programs, uh, that gov the government should work for all people, no matter the race, uh, gender, um, and make sure we are providing equitable service to all Americans. So it goes beyond the budget um, and ask, ask agencies to relook at everything we're doing to make sure we're reaching all Americans. 